This is the walk around portion of the F5B Tiger review from Hobby Lobby. We're going to take a close look at this beauty, show some of the features, and talk about some of the construction details, and then we will take it out and give it a flight. So as you can see, very sleek, very streamlined, it's got a very large folding prop. Uh, the surface finish on this thing is just absolutely flawless. Uh, we'll zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see the, uh, the finish on the molded wings and fuselage is absolutely perfect. In fact, the only dings there are in the surface finish are some that I put there myself, handling the wing and you know, dropping tools on it and things like that. <clears throat> I'm using my Spectrumized JR9303 and an AR6200 receiver. Uh, the fuselage is fiberglass, so you don't have to worry about the any carbon fiber blocking the signals from the radio. So all of the antennas are internal. Now we're going to get a little closer, show a couple of interesting things. The speed controller that Hobby Lobby provided is the Jetty Spin 44, and it has an arming switch, an on-off switch. So what I did is I actually made it so that I can plug the battery in and put the wing on and not have the system armed. The switch is actually quite tall, but I used some spacers, and there'll be photographs you can see, to make it so that the switch stays mostly flush with the surface. It sticks up just far enough to be able to get it with your thumb. Keeps it a little cleaner. The propeller is an uh, Aeronaut Cam 14 by 12, 14 inch diameter, 12 inch pitch folding prop and it has the turbo style spinner that lets cooling air get into the motor uh, through holes in the firewall. Very neat feature. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and turn it over. And all of the color that you see on here is, is molded in. It's not, uh, there's no paint, uh, I have applied no paint to it. All of the color is applied in the mold. Uh, this, the aileron servos are covered by these nice streamlined fairings. Uh, I've already got them taped down, so you can't really see the servo in there, but the servos are the high tech 125 metal geared thin wing servos, and they barely, barely fit. You can't use a servo any thicker than that. And the little, you can't really see in there, but there's just barely room for a Sullivan clevis to attach to the horns. You do have to drill those horns out very slightly for the pin to go through. The elevator is kind of an interesting deal. It's, uh, there's no rudder control, as you can see. But this is where the push rod connects to the elevator. And it's just got a 90 degree bend on it, but it can't go anywhere. You'll be able to see that more clearly in the photographs. And then the uh, elevator servo is actually behind this little circle here. It's a uh, high-tech HS65, and it is also just barely thin enough to fit in there. So you've got a straight shot to your elevator. Very tidy setup. Nice molded-in wing fairing. It's really, really stunningly pretty. You can kind of see the, the reflections in the wing there and see how pretty that is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the wing off, and we'll show you what's on the inside. Okay, we've got the wing off. One thing I didn't mention is that the wing on this is not a uh, foam core or molded foam or built up balsa or anything like that. It's hollow molded and the structure is um, fiberglass skins over both sides of balsa sheet and then it has a full depth spar and the whole thing is made in a mold. It's, it's light and very, very rigid. So, inside the fuselage here, We've got a 3-cell 3300 PolyQuest pack, 25C, and it needs to go about as far forward as it can go without hitting the motor in order to get the CG right. Here we have the main part of my AR6200 receiver, and then the satellite receiver is under here. Uh, both of them are held in place with double-sided foam tape. The Spin 44 speed controller is tucked against the side here, again held in with double-sided foam tape. I just used a bit of masking tape to keep the wires out of the way. What you see here, this is a pull string. It's some 60 pound test braided fishing line. It's actually tied in a loop. It goes around the front of the battery pack and it's just taped to it. 
This is so that I can pull the battery without having to tug on the wires. There is a little bit of Velcro right here at the back end to keep it from sliding, but that makes it kind of difficult to get out. So I've got this pull string on here so that I can use it to pull it loose from the Velcro without having to tug on the wires. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of here. It may require both hands. I'm going to have to set the camera down. Yeah, I'm going to have to set it down. Okay, now the battery's out. And you can see that's a PolyQuest 3300 XP 25C pack that Hobby Lobby provided with the review model. Capable of uh, way more current than this thing draws. Uh, speaking of current draw, I did some measurements. And with a freshly topped off pack, this motor, this geared axi motor, is pulling 49 amps. That's 527 watts, and it's turning that propeller at 5200 RPM. That will equate to about a 60 mile per hour pitch speed. Uh, it's not extremely fast, but the point of this is not to go fast. The point is to go straight up quickly. And then you shut the motor off and have fun. Let gravity be your motor. Uh, that's really about it. The horizontal stabilizer is held on with two socket head cap screws. That makes it easy to take apart for travel. The wing is held on by three cap screws. Um, you can already see the so you've already seen the equipment layout. There's the small patch of Velcro that keeps the battery in place, and that's about it. Uh, the only thing that's it's a little bit difficult about assembling this. The firewall that they send with it is fiberglass. It's a little too large in diameter to fit in the nose, so you either have to trim it down or uh, do what I did, and I actually just made a firewall out of 8th inch aircraft plywood because the one that they provided, the mounting holes didn't match any of the ones for this motor. It was apparently designed for the motor style that they used to sell. So rather than have to trim it down and have holes that didn't line up, I just made one out of plywood. And you'll be able to see pictures of that process uh, in the still photos of the review. Um, the only other thing that is slightly unusual is the way I've got the radio set up. And I have it configured so that the motor doesn't run when my flight mode switch is pulled up. Um, when the switch is in the launch position, the throttle moves, you know, controls the motor as usual. When I have the switch in the middle position, um, I can actually slightly raise or lower the ailerons using the throttle stick. I may not use that on this model. I actually copied this model set up from another one I had that had full span ailerons and it acted like camber changing for thermaling. That doesn't tend to work well with outboard ailerons like this one has. Um, but then when I pull the switch into the landing mode, this stick raises and lowers the ailerons as spoiler rods and it does it all proportionally. So pull the stick all the way back, it's like you know, cutting throttle, it raises both ailerons and then you land. And should you need to go around, you just go full power, hit this switch, and the motor goes comes back on. This uh, speed controller is very nice because it's set for a slow spool up. It takes two seconds to reach full power, which is very easy on the gearbox. And when you uh, throttle it off, it takes uh, two seconds for the brake to fully engage. So that doesn't shock the gearbox and uh, should make it live long and be happy. And that's about it for the walk around. Um, we'll proceed with the flying.